What is going on guys, DBG here, and this is the last of my position tier lists for NBA 2K20 on my team for the month of September. Obviously, it's something I've done every month pretty much since J May of 2019, so you're going to be seeing a lot more, well, not a lot more of this specific tier list, you're going to be seeing a lot more tier lists in general in um, the future. So, yeah, basically what we've got here is the tier list of the centers. This is only going to be primary centers and this is all my opinion. I'm going to say this right now, there's a lot of centers I don't like that you might like. A big reason for that is with the centers, I've always said this, it was a big thing last year, it's a big thing this year, there are different ways of playing the game. There are inside centers, there are shooting centers, there are defensive centers, there are rim running centers, there are Giannis at center, who's obviously not on this list, but that is another way of playing the game. So things like that, are basically just things that can change up opinions so again this is my opinion if you don't agree with it that is perfectly fine this is a video game if you guys want to use other cards you prefer other cards that i say are bad that is perfectly fine as well if you guys want to run your own play your own favorite players that is perfectly fine as well i'm not here to say that but in my opinion this is where i would rank these players first up serge abaka C, and I'm going to explain why. He shoots the ball really well and is a pretty decent shot blocker. And he's kind of mobile. I'm sorry, like if you guys don't know, I am a very much a believer in shooting centers. And for that reason, Serge Ibaka is going to be way higher on my list than most people. Most people probably have him in D. I don't think anyone can really argue that Serge Ibaka is worthless, but I'm going to put him in C tier. He's really nice center. Joel Embiid, A tier. Good three-point rating, 75. Good length. Really good player build. Definitely a step below the elites, but not that far off, to be completely honest. He is a step below the elite centers, but I can't put him completely out of that conversation. A really, really good card. Nikola Jokic, C. Yes, he's better offensively than Abaka. Yes, he moves better. He's not as good defensively. And he shoots the ball relatively well. I don't like Jokic. I've used him a few times. I think he's fine. I think he does a job. He does the job if you just want someone to stand in a corner shoot the ball, but the release is slow, especially if you are not using the shot stick. His shooting is kind of a negative, but he's good enough that he's this tier. Chris Tapps. A, but close to B. He's not as good as Embiid, I'm going to say that now. Even though he is three inches taller, I don't know what it is. I would just take Embiid 100 times out of 100 over Chris Tapps. Boy, Zingas. Don't ask me what, like... Tells me what it is. Maybe it's the strength, but Porzingis, he just can't shoot for me either. I don't really like this Porzingis card. I know for a fact I will like Porzingis later on in the year. Like one of my favorite cards from NBA 2K20 was Kristaps Porzingis um, Galaxy Opal. But I'm going to put him A. I'm going to put him A for now. Carl Anthony Towns, B. He's like, he's noticeably worse than um, Embiid and Porzingis for me. I just don't, I can't shoot with Cat. I don't know what it is. I can't shoot with him. Whether I'm playing Unlimited, I think at the very start of the year, I used him as my center in Unlimited, and I just couldn't. I had to sell him on my nobody spent account because he just wasn't good enough. He just was not good enough for me. So I'm going to put him in B tier. Bam, as Kendrick Perkins likes to call him, we got Bam out of the bayou. He's actually not... He's going C because he can shoot, but he's not as bad as a lot of these guys. He's not as bad as some people might say. He does a job. He does a job. That's all I'm going to say. He's okay. He's a little bit mobile. He's fine. He's definitely the worst of these three, but I think I'm going to put him in C tier. Shaquille O'Neal. Man, I'm not sure there is someone that crashes rebounds like this Shaq. I'm really not sure. I'm going to put him... It's Again, it's the Porzingis conversation. Does he go B or, B or A? I'm going to put him in A for now with potential to move him down. This Shaq crashes boards like crazy. But, oh, I'm going to put him in B because he just, any time I come up against Shaq, I paint it. And I know, I, I know I've won when I play against a Shaq. I know all I have to do is just sit in the paint. So, with no mid-range shot even, yeah, I got to put him B. Because there are some guys that can kind of shoot the mid. Like, PJ Brown can kind of shoot it. Nate Thurman can kind of shoot it. JaVel McGee with, like, a 60-something rating can kind of shoot it. I'm going to have to put Shaq below those guys. Okay, Daniel Gafford. I don't. I've used this guy once, Evo. Not very good. 
I've played up I played against Simil a bunch of times, especially in my team limited last week, and I killed him. However, now we've got Cabin Gale, Ty's favourite center. Uh I mean he's athletic. He can kinda shoot. He blocks shots moderately well. B? Like he's better than Cat. I don't think he's good as in beat. B potential to move him up. Potential to move him up to A. Uh, I I move him B. Nicholas Claxton, man, he's nice. <laughs> Nicholas Claxton's nice. He is quality, but he's he's not as good as any of these three guys. But trust me, this Nicholas Claxton guard is good. His mid range is cat. Claxton's midi is cash. His midi is absolutely cash. It's just like in terms of his three pointer. It's not the greatest, to be honest. It is not the greatest. But he can occasionally hit them, so I'm going to put Claxton in C. Brooke Lopez, B. He's actually really good on defense. He can't really shoot, though. They gave Brooke Lopez a 73 for some reason, and it's Milwaukee Bucks Brooke Lopez. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, I would understand given early career Brooklyn Nets Brooke Lopez 73, because he didn't really shoot it, or even less. But, like, come on, 2K. Why does Brook Lopez, even with the Evo, I'm pretty sure he still has a 73. Like, I just don't, I just don't understand, but it's 2K, I guess. 2K being 2K. Next, we got Artis. And this is a tough one because if you're an inside center, if you need an inside center, he's probably S, but I don't, can I use him on one account? I think he's fine. I really think he's fine. He just doesn't do enough for me. He does not do enough. Ew. He eats Porzingis alive, but on the other end, Porzingis will outshoot him. It's a weird one. I'm trying to think, like, will, would, do I think my team would be better with Porzingis or with Artis? I think it would be better with Porzingis. Then we got Mike and S tier, no doubt about that. That release, especially since they nerfed the stick and people are shooting with the button, his release is cash. His release is so cash. Mike and one of the best shooters in this game. A Donald Foil. A Donald Foil. He's going D. He's not bad enough to go into F or go into worthless. I'm sorry. He's a monster. He is a monster. I don't know what is his player build. He is a monster. And the exact same with John Konchak. Like, John, John, John Konchak. I think I mispronounced his name. But like, John Konchak, like, he is... Like, in this game, especially early on, man, he, he looked every bit worth that contract that he was given by the Atlanta Hawks. But, um, yeah, I'm going to put him in... D for now. Scott Pollard, maybe it's, I don't know what it is. Give me these two guys that were Scott Pollard because these guys just look like giants in game, whereas Pollard doesn't. And Daniel Gafford is speed. Ryan Hollins, I don't know what it is about Hollins. He's Shaq level. He is Shaq level. What the hell, like, the 2K do to Ryan Hollins? He dunks everything. He gets every board. He literally looks like he's the biggest player in the game, no matter who he's guarding. He looks bigger than Shaq. He is whatever the hell they did to Ryan Hollins. He is dominant. He's not the greatest shooter. He but he dominates. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But he's dominant. Kevin Duckworth D. Again, used him once. Did not seem to do much. He's actually an okay three point rate as well. Oh, Alvin Adams doesn't really do anything well. Doesn't do anything badly. So, see, I guess. Not awful, not great. Next up is a guy that he is going into top tier, but if you want to put him in A or B tier, I wouldn't argue. It all depends on your play style. It's the best shooting center in the game by a mile, Sam Perkins. Sam Perkins, the sniper. Man, like Sam Perkins catches the ball on the three point line and you're playing unlimited or if he is eligible for limited, it's green. It's green every single time. I'm sorry, it is. He is just green, 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 green. Anytime I play against him in TTO and I leave him the tiniest bit open, green. Anytime I play him in Unlimited and leave him the slightest bit open, green. He is just ridiculous to go shooting. And that's the reason why he's in there. PJ Brown. PJ Brown is like one step above Shaq and Ryan Hollins. He is a dominant rebounder. He is just an inside non-shooting center. And I hate non-shooting centers. So he's going A tier. Al Horford. Al is going, great mid-range, broken release. 
Before stick patch, I would have put him in S. Before stick patch, I would have put him in S. And now he's going higher in version of A because his release is so ugly. He is one of the worst looking releases in the game. Before, um, again, before the stick patch, releases didn't matter at all. So Al Horford was definitely going to be an A tier or an S tier because he's got bronze clamps, which is important. He's got great stats at 95 mid and 83. Decent rebounding. Uh, he is still, he's still really good, but man, he got an A. Willis Reed, good mid range, good enough rebounding. Kind of does the job. He does the job. He's probably going to be, I'm not going to put him any lower than that. Nate Thurmond. For me, I would never use Nate Thurmond, but I can objectively say he's a beast. Not an awful shooter. 6'11, gold clamps for a center. You better believe in the pick and roll, if he happens to get switched, you are sorted. Like, imagine if you have, say, I don't know. Say if you want to put Pierce guarding a point guard, because Pierce can guard centers a little bit in this game. Say if you have Pierce matching up to the other team's point guard, and you've got Nate Thurman, you would switch everything, because Nate has got gold clamps. Later on in the year, do I think Nate will be good? No. If you were to ask me in December who I would have more success with, Nate Thurman or Al Horford, I would probably say Al Horford. If you were to ask me who I would have more success with, um, Cap Miguel or Nate Thurman, I might say Nate Thurman. But for now, Nate Thurman is one of is one of a kind. Not my play style. Definitely not for me. Definitely not a card I would use. But for anyone who plays that style, he's one of a kind. JaVale. A little bit better than Shaq. Not as good as PJ Brown. He's fine. Does a job. Lanier. Lanier is super quick. He is super, super quick. Great mid-range shot. Great release. I just think the lack of a three ball puts Lanier a little bit outside S tier. But... Other than that, though, Lanier is Lanier is up there with. He's a good card. He is a really good card. Like, he is up there with the better centers. I again, not my personal preference, but a good card. Demarcus Cousins. One of these two tiers. One of these two tiers. And I'm gonna put Demarcus Cousins in A, but move Chris Stapps down to B. Yeah, I think DeMarcus Cousins belongs to tier above Chris Stapps. Boogie, not a great three-point shooter, but a great mid-range shooter. Big build, gets rebounds well. A tier. Bill Lambeer. Oh my god. I'm so... I so want to put him in S tier, but he's A. If Again, if you had asked me pre-shot stick patch, who's better, Bill Lambeer or Horford, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Lambeer, silver clamps, great three ball, great rebounding. He is nearly top tier he is nearly top tier for me and it's just that stick patch has killed it rick smiths a tier doesn't miss from mid at all can't shoot the three um seven four good good rebounder can't block shots so gets a ton of offensive boards rick smiths is going a tier but i think give me bill lambier over rick smiths vlade Vlade is not awful. He really is not awful. I think I might have start moving people down tiers, to be honest. If Chris Apps is down one. I can't move Shaq down. Can't move Artis down. I mean, if you want to move Artis up, I'm not going to... Oh, even though it's not really distributed, Artis is probably more on this level. But Vlade... Vlade, he's better than all these guys. Or is he? No, I'll move Vlade down to C. Marcus Saul, though, goes to be Decent three-pointer. Hakeem Olajuwon. A, he kind of belongs in that tier with these guys. He belongs in that same tier. He's, he's good, but I don't think he's great. Good, but not great. That's kind of the way I'm going to go with Hakeem Olajuwon. Then we got Big Ben Wallace. I hate this card. I'm saying that right now. I think he's straight garbage. I think he's terrible. Like, if I was to have Ben Wallace, I'd have him here. Yeah, give me any of these guys above him over Ben. Except maybe Shaq. Is Ben better than Shaq? That's the question. I don't quite think so. I'm putting Ben in C. I get it, he's a diamond. I get it, he's the most expensive card in the game. He is awful. He is absolutely awful, in my opinion. So I'm going to put him down here in C tier. We got Bill Walton. Bill Walton belongs in C as well. He's not, he doesn't do anything well. He's not good. Kareem belongs in the tier with Hakeem. Um, he Kareem kind of belongs at all the good but not Nate Thurman level um, centers. So actually, 
And um, we got Michael Thompson in here. I'm going to put him in D tier. He's not great. But one good thing is that we've got the best defensive center in the game. We've got the best shooting center in the game. And then we've got the best overall center in the game in Mike. I don't think anyone's really going to argue that Mike is not the best center in the game. So we've got the best overall. We get the best like defensive and interior inside center. And we have the best shooting center. So that is, I'm happy with the way we've gone with S tier. And then A tier is a slight downgrade on Mike and in these two guys right here. We've got Rick Smith, some great interior centers. And probably, there's no cards even close to Sam Perkins, not going to lie in terms of shooting. So yeah, anyway, that is it. That is the tier list that we are going to be working with. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. The center position I like, but to be fair, Giannis at center is just the most game-changing player of all of these. So anyway, yeah. While we can't... While the, with the way my recording is, unfortunately, I can't put in the outro. That still does not mean that we have to uh, completely, completely miss out on the outro song so lads that is pretty much it that is pretty much it for the video thank you guys for watching please like comment and subscribe